All right. So I'm going to look at this test as if I were you. I'm looking for only the questions right now that I can do straight calculator. So I'm looking at the first one. Looks like a lot of like reading or whatever like that. I'm just like, okay, maybe not. Like That's not like a straight calculator question. The second one, though, is straight calculator, right? So it says if f of x is equal to log base 3 of x, so remember how you put the log with the, the 3 at the bottom, you hit math, you go down till you get to log base right here, hit that so you could put the 3 in, um, and then you go over here and put the x, okay? So log base 3 of x, and it says... If this and g of x, so here's g of x, which is the answer choices, is the image of f of x after a translation five units to the left. So this is going to be the original, and I'm looking for a graph. Let me just show you the graph of the original. So the original, okay, so it goes through uh, one comma zero, okay? So I'm looking for this graph translated to the left five units. So I'm going to go ahead and under y equals, I'm going to go over here because I want to keep the original. I'm going to go ahead and type in the first one, uh, the first answer choice, which is log base 3 of x plus 5. So again, you hit math, go down to the bottom. Log base is right there. So I'm going to hit A or enter. Um, so I'm putting 3 in, and I'm going to do x plus 5. So x plus 5. And again, do this with me. This is not television, and I'm hitting graph. Oh, there you go. Look. I'm taking this graph, I'm moving it to the left five units, and that is my graph. That's my answer. So the answer for two is choice one. For number three, I'm going to look at this when factoring to reveal the roots, da, 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 which equations can be used. Okay. So basically, I'm looking for equivalence. I'm looking to see which ones are equal. So I'm going to take this right here, and I'm going to plug that into y1. I'm going to pause the video so I can do this quickly. All right, so it takes a while to plug it in, but it's okay, right? We want to invest the time into something that's going to help us get an answer correct. So under Y1, I plugged in the original. Under Y2, I plugged in the first one. Y3 is the second one, and Y4 is the third one, okay? So now to see if they are the same, I'm going to go to table. So hit second graph. Um, so this is Y1, which is the original, and I'm looking to see which ones have the same table as y1 so if i look at y2 i scan it okay that looks like it's exactly the same if i look at y3 i scan it that's exactly the same if i look at y4 that is not the same right so the last one is not equivalent because look 728 this is these are all 1092 do you see that so i know that three is not correct so i'm looking for my answer choice that says one and two so one and two only Okay. All right. If I look at the next one, mm, that's that's going to take some time to like kind of think about it. This one right here, question number five, is also a straight calculator. So I'm going to go ahead and take my calculator. I'm going to quit out of this. So second quit. All right. A lot of this is using your calculator really well, knowing how to use it. Anytime you're like, I want to, I don't want to sit there and delete all of these. You can reset the calculator by hitting second plus. 7, 1, 2. And so now, if you go to y equals, boom, nothing's there, right? It cleared it. So the solutions, anytime I see solutions, I'm like, okay, I can use the apps button, and I can go into um, apps. This calculator doesn't have it, um, but apps under here, polysimult2. So apps, I'm going to write down the steps, poly Simult 2, and then you're going to hit enter, and then you're going to do number 1, which is poly root finder. Um, so you plug the coefficients in, which are 5, negative 2, 13. Actually, no, they were trying to trick me. I have to subtract 9 from both sides, minus 9 from both sides. Uh, so I'm going to get 5x squared minus 2x, and then 13 minus 9 is 13 minus 9, anyone, anyone, 4, right? So that's going to be plus 4 equals 0, so I can plug it in there. So my coefficients are going to be 5, negative 2, and 4, and then I'm going to hit solve. That's one way to do this question, okay? Um, let's just say you didn't know that. Like, I didn't know how to do that, right? So then you could take 
split this, plug this under y1, plug this under y2, and see where they meet. So since my calculator doesn't have poly root finder, um, I'm going to do it the second way, which is go to y equals, type this in, 5x squared, so 5x squared minus 2x plus 13, and then over here I'm going to put 9 under my y2, and I'm looking to see where they intersect. So I'm going to hit graph. Okay, so I don't see my blue graph, so let me just go ahead and hit zoom. Go down to zoom fit, which is choice zero. Let's see if I can see the whole. Okay, okay, there we go. So there's the first one. And there's the second one. Okay, so it looks like they intersect over here at the bottom. Um, so I'm looking for solutions. So I can go ahead. I want to make my calculator show me what's going on down here a little bit. So I'm going to hit window and I'm going to my X min and I'm going to change that to negative, let's just say negative 50. Let's be dramatic about it. All right. Oh no, I didn't want my X min, I wanted my Y min. Yeah, because that doesn't help me going to the left, right? Let me go back. Let me keep that at negative 10. Let me go to my Y min. Right, and instead of nine, let's just go ahead and put negative 10. All right, now let's go ahead and hit it. See if that's better. All right, that looks like it's gonna be better. Okay, so what we're looking for is we're looking to see if they intersect. Solutions are where they meet. So I'm gonna hit second, calc. Option number five is an intersection. So first curve, Second curve, guess. Let's see if they meet. Okay, so no sign change. So let's see. Let's try that again. Second calc. So I'll we'll quit this. Mm, let's see if I can zoom into this little thing right here. So go to graph. I, ca I can't really see what's going on here. So let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Let me go hit my window. Instead of, I don't want to see all of this. I just want to see what's here. So let me change that. Uh, this is too big. This Y max is too big. Let's make this uh, 40 instead of 533. Let's see if that's better. Because I want to see if they're even meeting. All right, so that is the first one. This is the second one. Okay, so if they're not crossing, right, what that means is solutions, they're the solutions are not real, they're imaginary. So anything with without an I, you see this right here? These two have I's in it. Um, so that means that it's not going to be 4 and it's not going to be 1 because they don't have I's in it. So it's between the second one or the third one. In this case, I do have to use poly root finder. So I do have to follow these steps to figure out which one is it. Um, or I could use the quadratic formula, whichever one. Okay, um, but with the calculator, poly root finder is probably the way to go for this question. Um, the next one, so question number five, the answer choice for this one, if you do the poly root finder, just so you know, uh, the answer choice for this is going to be two. Two is the correct answer. All right. Um, but up, 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 up. I'm going to look at the next one. So it says equation correctly represents in terms of the monthly. So again, I'm looking to see if these are equivalent. So I'm going to plug this under Y1, Y2, Y3, Y4, Y5, and then see which one is the same. All right, so I went ahead and plugged it in. And again, two things. Number one, plug this into the calculator yourself, right? Don't just wait for me to do it. And the second thing is make sure that you are careful because this right here, there's a whole bunch of numbers. So like, for example, I typed in 1.00323. That's wrong. It's 32737, right? So just make sure that you're typing it incorrectly. And again, you're going to go to second table, right? Second graph. And you're looking to see which one's equivalent. So Y1 is the original. That's this right here. Um, this is Y2. So they're different. So I can cross that out. Uh, this is y3. They are different, okay? So I can cross that out. 
uh, this is y4, they are the same, right? You see that? So the correct answer is this one right here. And just to be sure, let me just go toggle over to the right. No, that doesn't say 2000. All right, so I'm looking for which one's the same. That's not the same, All right? Do you see this? So, so far right now we have uh, one, two, three, four. We have four questions done. All right, that's really good. Four out of six, got it. Okay, seven, nope, not a calculator question. Uh, over what time interval does the amount of medication increase? Okay, I know what increases means, right? That it goes up. Um, so I could plug this into the calculator. Yeah, I could plug this into the calculator and see where does my, where on the graph does it increase? That's pretty straightforward to do. Let me do that. All right, so after I type in the function, so remember, make sure that you type it in correctly. And again, you should be pausing the video, typing this in yourself, okay? Um, when I hit graph, I notice that I don't see the whole graph. Like, I don't know what's happening over here. It does look like it's going up, coming down, and then going up again. But I want to make sure, so I'm going to go ahead and hit window, and I want to change my Y max, right? I want to see what's happening up at the top. So up, down is Y, left, right is X. Uh, so let's just go 50, see if that's enough. Okay, so a little bit better, but no. Uh, hit window. Let's go back down. All right, you want me to be dramatic about it? 500. Let's see if that works. Okay, so up, down, hits. And comes up. So I'm looking only for 0 to 6, right? Because that's what it tells me from 0 to 6 hours. So I could hit my window right here just to make it a little bit better. And I can change this from 0 to 6. And I'm looking to see where the graph increases. So boom, from 0 to somewhere looks like about 2. Yep, because over here at 3 it starts to decrease again. Okay, so that helped me a lot. So I can see from zero to two is where the graph is increasing, right? I'm looking for where it's going up. So the correct answer is zero to two hours, okay? Do you see how to do this? Okay, so we're getting more as many points as we can. Which representation of a graph has imaginary roots? Imaginary is where it doesn't hit the x-axis. So like that or like that, okay? So that's imaginary. So automatically in knowing this, look at this. It's hitting the x-axis, so this is wrong, okay? This is also wrong because it's hitting zeros. So if I were to graph this negative 2 comma 0, that's hitting the x-axis, right? So negative 2 comma 0, that, that's touching the x-axis. It actually touches it twice um, at negative 2 and negative a half. Negative a half. Let me erase this. So negative 2 and negative a half, it's hitting it twice. So it's going to be something like that. So this is out as well. So 1 and 3, do you see how we just brought it down to, right, only 50-50 shot? So I'm going to go to this one right here, uh, imaginary roots. The first thing I'm going to do is minus 64, bring everything, set it equal to 0. So I have two parentheses, x plus 3 squared minus 64 equals 0. And now that's something that I can easily graph. So I'm going to go to my calculator. I'm going to go here, let's take this out, and let's type this in. So two parentheses, x plus 3, close that, square, minus 64, and I'm going to hit graph, and I'm looking to see if it hits the x-axis. Okay, so now automatically, boom, it hits the x-axis here, so this is not imaginary. Um, if I wanted to see the whole graph, right, hit zoom, and standard is regular, so zoom 6, makes it standard and it touches here so that's wrong automatically and it touches here okay so two is out so that means the only answer that makes sense is four if you were to graph it you would see that it looks something either like this or like that okay all right so this is good equivalent number 11 store okay store button right here so you take a number again i always choose 2.1 so 2.1 store in for x um, and then you type this whole thing in. All right, so a couple of things. Number one, please make sure that you're using parentheses. 
correctly, make sure you type it incorrectly. The I is second and this decimal point, that's where the little I thingy is. Do you see it right there? Um, and as soon as I plugged in the first one, they matched. So remember, you write down this negative 4 minus 16.8 I. And then as soon as you type in the first one, they match. Uh, nothing else matches. So the correct answer is 1. Okay. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We have 7 questions done. And we know that they're correct. Okay. Number 12, eh, that's some probability stuff. Forget it. Uh, this is 13. You could do this one. You could plug the numbers in A, B, C, and see which one matches. Actually, I'm, we're going we're gonna to do this. So the first thing I did is I reset my calculator, second plus 712, and then I'm going to go ahead and adjust my window, okay, because this is definitely going to help. So I'm going to hit window. Um, my X min, say so this over here, let's just say I put zero. So my X min is zero because I'm looking for the lowest X value. I know it's a little bit less than zero. Um, zero is fine, okay, because it's going to start over here. Okay, um, and then I'm going to go here, and then I'm looking for my X max. So the largest X max that they give me is two pi over three. So two pi over three, so I'm going to, right, that's where my graph is going to stop. So let's put that in. So alpha y equals option number one. Oh, it doesn't do that. So I put two pi is second, this little thing right here. Uh, so two pi over three. Okay. And then my scale, what is it going up by, right? This is going up by pi over six. So I'm going to put that down. So second, get the pi in there, divided by six. Okay. So my y min um, this looks like it's five, so let's just go from the negative side doesn't really matter, so let's just go to negative five up to, well, if this is one, this is going by one, this is negative three, so negative three is better. So let me go negative three, and then my y max is the highest number, it's going to be five, six, seven, right, because it goes up to about here. So y max is 7, and the scale is 1, okay? So now when I go to my graph, this is kind of what I'm seeing, right? I didn't type anything in yet. So now instead of a, I'm going to put the number 2. So 2 is going to be substituted here. Uh, 6 is going to be substituted in for b, and 3 is going to be substituted in for c. Do you see what I'm doing? So I'm going to go to my calculator. Uh, I'm going to go to my mode, make sure that it's unradian, which it is. So anytime you're graphing anything with sine, cosine, tangent, keep the mode in radian. Um, and then we're going to go to y equals here, and I'm going to type it in. So instead of the a, my a is going to be 2 for the first one. So I'm going to do 2. Then I'm going to hit the cos button, which is right here. So cos. And then instead of b, I'm putting the number 6. So 6x. Let's close those parentheses. Plus, and then c is 3 here. So when I hit graph, I should see exactly this. So it's going to go over here. It's going up. Is that right? Right off the bat. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that actually looks right. Okay. So look, right? It's going like this. It's going down to one. Uh, it's coming back up. I've been getting lucky, right? All my answers, the first ones I plug in are correct. You can plug in the other ones to make sure, uh, but the correct answer is one. If you look at the rest of them, they will not uh, be the same. So like, for example, let's just do two. Let's let's plug these numbers in just to make sure because I just happened to, like I said, luck out. Uh, so A is still two. B here is three. So instead of six, let me go here and put three in there. And instead of the, so C is one. So I'm going to put a one here. And when I hit graph, look, that doesn't look the same, right? It's going below zero. It's coming back up. Yeah, that doesn't look like this, doot, doot, right? So I know that that is not right. I should also, if you're not sure, look at different points, right? So the first mark, uh, hash mark is right here. That's pi over 6, and this number should hit 1, pi over 6, 1. So this is pi over 6, 1, and that's where the bounce should happen, and that's not what happens in this graph, okay? All right, so we got another one correct. 
Um, this one, if you have graph paper and you remember the formula, you can definitely get right. Y equals 1 over 4P. We have done this X minus H squared plus K. Uh, you are completely capable of doing this one. Um, but if you were not paying attention or you're not in class or whatever else, this is not a straight calculator question. You would have to actually take it, put it onto the graph um, and do it that way. All right, so number 15. Let's just pretend that 14, you didn't remember how to do it. It's okay. Um, Y1, Y2 this and see where they meet. Okay, so this one is definitely doable on the calculator. All right, so when I graphed it, right, so under Y equals, Remember to get the fraction bar alpha y equals, so you plug in y1. Be careful if there's any negative signs in front of this, right? I know it might look uh, like equal sign. Um, it doesn't have a negative sign here, but just make sure if there's any negatives, da-da-da. Okay, so then when I hit graph, it looks like there might be, there's definitely an intersection right here. So uh, it looks like it's going to be either 1 or 3. Um, because these both have, no, it could be this one as well. All right, so now let's go ahead and see uh, which one it is. So I'm going to hit second calc or trace. I'm looking for intersection, which is option number five. And I'm going to hit enter, enter, enter. Oh, second curve. Okay, so let's go down to the second curve, which is in blue. And then I'm going to go to guess, guess where I think it is, and it tells me, okay, x is equal to 0.5. So I know that, yeah, it has to be either 1 or 3. So automatically I can get rid of these. And now I want to see if negative 1 third is also a solution. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to do it again. So second calc, uh, option number 5, which is intersection, and I want to go to the negative side. So, okay, so somewhere over here. Let me go, let me be dramatic. So somewhere to the left, so I'm going to hit enter right here. I'm going to go on the second curve. I'm going to hit enter and guess somewhere around there, is it? Okay, so no. So the negative one, uh, the negative, uh, what was it, one third? Negative one third does not work. If, let's just say you're not sure, like, hey, did I even do it right, right? You can go to second graph, which is the table. Well, let's quit out of this first. You can go to second graph. Um, and right, we don't see one third here. So you could hit second window, which is a table set, and you can type in one third here. One third, and then hit second graph. And across from one third, we have different numbers. So that's one third. Now let me go to negative one third. Let me do that again. Second table set or second window, negative one third. Let me hit second graph. And I have errors, okay? So not all errors are the same. So as soon as you see that, they are not equal. So the only answer is three, okay? All right. Another one, right. Another one, right. Um, inverse, nah, nah. Right, all of these are like nah. Uh, da, da, da. Which graph represents a polynomial function that contains this as a factor? Mm, nah. This is not calculator. This is calculator. 21 is calculator. Equivalent, right? Plug this under y1, y2, y3, y4. See which ones are the same, okay? I am not going to do this for you because I've been doing enough plugging for you. Um, so you should be doing that yourself, and you should be able to see that 1, 2, and 3 are all equivalent. So the correct answer is 4, okay? Please plug this in yourself and do it. All right. The next one, the difference between the maximum, the values of the max of P and the min of F is, okay, we could do this, max and min. We could do this question. So this goes under Y1. I'll do, I will do this one with you. All right, so I'm, I plugged in the first one, which is f of x, because uh, this one, it already gave me the graph, so I don't need to plug anything in, and it didn't give me an equation. So I'm looking for the minimum of f, which is this right here. 
So you hit second calc, and we're looking for minimum, which is option number three. And there's my cursor right here. So I'm going to go to the left. It says left bound. So I'm going to go to the left, to the left of the vertex, which is the minimum. And I'm going to hit enter. So somewhere to the left, and now I'm going to go to the right of it. I know it's a stupid game. I get it. I know it's dumb. But the calculator is going to make us play, so let's play. So hit enter, and then guess. You go to where you think it is, which I think it's somewhere right around here. And you're going to hit enter, and it'll tell you what it is, right? So the minimum is point, uh, negative 0.75 and then negative 5.25. So the minimum value is negative 5.25. Negative 5.25, that is the min of F. Um, and then it says the maximum of P. So the maximum of P is going to be the highest point, uh, which it looks like. This is the max, right? So this is if this is 6, then this number right here has to be 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's check that. Yep. So this max here is going to be where Y is equal to 5. All right. So I'm going to take my two numbers. And I'm going to subtract them. So 5, because difference means to subtract. So 5 minus 5, negative 5.25. So I just go to my calculator and let's type that in. So I have 5 minus negative, here's the negative sign, 5.25. And I'm going to hit enter. All right, and then my calculator gives me 10.25 as the answer, so that is there. All right, so this is another one that's correct. Let's see if I have my 10 so far. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, I have 11 questions right so far, for sure. Um, I don't know what my computer is doing. Okay, there we go. Okay, I have 11 questions correct, and we are only on question number 21. All right, 22. All right. Uh, the next one right here, eh, not a calculator question. Boom. How many solutions exist? Okay, this is a straight calculator question. All right, so for this one, how many solutions exist? I went to Y1, right? So you're going to split this into two. Uh, you're going to plug this under Y1, Y2. Um, so the reason why I came back to the video is I see a negative sign here. Do you see that? This is what I was telling you to be careful of. So under Y2, we're going to plug in the negative sign, which is over here. Um, how do you get this little absolute value? You hit math. Go over to num, see this? So hit the right arrow. And then option number one is ABS. Okay, so you're going to type in the 3x minus 2. So 3x minus 2. And then you go to go to the right and put plus 5. So now let's hit graph. Let's see if we can see all of it. All right, so that's y1. Looks funky and weird, but it's okay. One. Okay, this looks like it hits four times. So one, two, three, four, right? You're looking to see where the blue graph and the red graphs where they meet. So that's four times, okay? We don't care what those numbers are. Uh, we just care that they meet. All right. Um, good. So that is straight up 12 questions. 12 questions just on part one. 12 out of 24. Okay, so we got half of them. That's really good. So right now, we're pretty much guaranteed a 50 above. Let's try to aim for 14. Okay. Um, the first one, this is not straight calculator, even though you could say equivalent, right? Y1, Y2. They're already telling us that they are equivalent. They're asking us why they're equivalent. Okay. 26 is a calculator question. Uh, it's something that you could definitely do. So it says the zeros are 2, negative 2, 4, and negative 4. So, and it's asking you to sketch. Okay, we can do this. So you go to, you make a scale. You make a numbers right here. You're going to kind of eyeball it because it's a sketch. Let me do that better. 
so you go like that, something like this, like this. Again, this is a sketch. You go to 2 and negative 2. I'll do this in a different color so you can see it. Okay, so 2, you put a dot. Negative 2, you put a dot. 4, you put a dot. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And negative 4, you put a dot. Okay, and then you have to draw a graph through them. Uh, it's a polynomial. So you're going to have to actually, like, you can either start from up here, go down like that, like that. Or you can go from the bottom up like that, like that, okay? Um, there are two different answers that you can give for this. I'm a positive person, so I'm going to go something like, oh, let me do that again. It has to go through that point. I'm going to go like this, like that, okay? And I'm going to draw arrows at the end, and there you go. I would get full credit for this question. That's another two points that I just picked up. So that's 13 questions correct, okay? Straightforward. Uh, you don't need to do anything else for that. Uh, does it always work? We did do this question in class. Uh, the answer is no, justified algebraically. Not a calculator question, not a calculator question. Da da da. Okay. The average monthly rate of temperature change between August and November. We have done this. This is our first topic that we did. So you could definitely get this one correct. Um, plug this whole thing into Y1, and we're doing average rate of change, uh, which is the formula for average rate of change is going to be the Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Um, so we could let's go ahead and do this question. All right, so once I typed in the whole function, by the way, sine is right here, S-I-N, sin, whatever you want to call it, is right there. As long as you type it in, type in the numbers correctly. Um, I don't care what the graph looks like. I'm going to go to second graph. Um, and I'm looking for the average month uh, monthly rate of temperature change between August and November. Okay. So T is the month number. January is 1. August is the 8th month. And November is the 11th month. Okay, so I'm looking for what's across from 8 and what's across from 11. So let's just go ahead and put this into something that I know. So 11 comma whatever. Okay, so I'm looking to see what my Y's are. So to do that, I go to my calculator. I go to second table. I look across from 8, 78.866. So 78.866. That's a weird looking 8. 866. And that, that's still a weird looking eight, but whatever. And then I'm going to go across from 11, 48.598. 48.598. And I'm going to plug it into my formula. So Y, uh, I call this X1, Y1, X2, Y2. And I'm going to plug this into my formula. So if I go to my calculator, I already did it right here. So I plugged in my Y2. 48.598 minus my Y1, 78.866 over X2, which is 11, minus X1, which is 8. And I hit enter in the calculator, and I get this number. And it says rounded to the nearest tenth, so that's going to be negative 10.1. So my final answer for this question is negative 10.1. That's the average monthly rate of temperature change okay all right question number 32 is something that i can do straight calculator as well so let me just as always i'm going to reset my calculator second plus 712 i don't want to sit there and you know change things around so i'm going to go to y equals i'm going to type this in again to get the little two on the bottom i hit math go down to the bottom so i hit the up arrow and i go to log base hit enter put the little two on the bottom Go over here to x minus 3 and then plus 1. So since this doesn't say sketch, it says graph, I need to use exact points. You want to try to do as many exact points as possible. Okay. Um, so 4, comma 1. So I'm going to go, this is 5, so 4 is right here. 4, comma 1 is going to be right there at that point. I'm going to go back to my table. 5, comma 2, right? 
remember this says sketch so you want to be as exact as possible five two uh seven three so six seven three and again i'm going to keep going back to my table because i want my points to be exact 11 4 so this is 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 4 uh, okay do i have i can keep going do i have the five there it's going to be 19 5 so 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 so 5 is going to be somewhere over there so like if i'm not really sure what my graph's going to look like hit graph and you should be able to tell like okay it's going to go something like that uh okay do so i have something going down here at the bottom so let me go back to my table and let's see what's going on over here right these numbers again this says graph so you want to be as exact as possible as exact so let's go hit second window i want to be a little bit quicker let me go to negative five let's start the table at negative five and see what's happening so those are all errors okay those are all errors all right so I can see that um, over here, these are errors, right? But in the graph, I can see that it keeps on going here. So it's going to go to 3, like 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Looks like it's not going to hit 3, so it's going to go down like this. All right, so now what you want to do is you want to draw an arrow there and an arrow here so it looks like it's going to go somewhere right here it's going to keep going down getting closer to this number but not crossing so it's going to look something like that all right that right there would give me full points right so i've graphed as many points as i possibly can right if you want to be a little bit more exact you can go to the like estimate the decimal places like for example uh if i go down Right here. I know I'm taking a little bit of time on this question. I want to make sure that you get this to me is a no brainer. Anytime it says graph, because I can just plug it into my calculator and I can graph it. So if you want to be a little bit more exact like this, this is six comma two point six. So you could go to that six two point six, right? So this is two, two point six. Okay, that looks like about right. So that's another point that I can get. Do you get what I'm saying? So you can get a little bit more precise. So this is another two points that we've scored. So far right now, we have 14 correct. Um, this does say algebraically. However, you can do this on the calculator, right? You can literally just go ahead and plug it into the calculator. In order to do that, you need to have all the A, B, C on one side and the number on the other side. The first two look like they're already ready. But the third one right here is not, so you have to move this A over, so minus A minus A. So this one right here is going to be negative A plus 6B plus 2C is equal to 14. Um, my calculator does not have where I can plug this in, but again, apps, right, polysimult 2. You're going to choose option number 2, which is the simultaneous uh equation solver or whatever um, and then you're going to put the numbers like this is a three by three right three variables three equations um, and when you solve it if you don't know how to do this one please ask me uh stop me and be like hey professor can you show me how to do this so what you're going to get if you do this correctly is you're going to get a is equal to negative three you're going to get b is equal to one half and you're going to get C is equal to 4, okay? This right here, out of these four points, would give you 1. 1 out of 4, we want to try to get as many points as possible. 1 out of 4, one out of four is valid, okay? Uh, completely okay. All right, so given da-da-da and B is equal to da-da-da, is B of X a factor of A of X? Okay, you could definitely do this. The first thing you can do is take this X plus 2, set it equal to 0. So minus 2 on both sides. So you get x equals negative 2. So I'm going to go to my calculator here. Let me get out of this. And I'm going to store negative 2, right? Store x. Hit enter. Okay. 
and then you're going to plug the let me move this over here what is my my calculator is like my calculator is acting up uh let's put it over here all right so i'm going to plug this whole thing in so x to the fourth x to the fourth go over to the right plus 2x to the third 2x to the third go over to the right uh, plus 4x plus 4x and i have minus 10 and i'm going to hit enter so my calculator gives me an answer of negative 18. so what does that mean that means that the remainder is negative 18. remainder is negative 18. Factor means that the remainder is zero. So you could say, uh, since there is a remainder, remainder of negative 18, x plus 2 is not a factor. Right? Because remember, to get to be a factor, the remainder has to be zero. So if the remainder is anything besides zero, it is not a factor. All right. And that's another two points. No, another four points that we've scored. Uh, question 34 is worth four points. All right. So four points right there. Good. And then it asks you, is it a factor? So you have to actually explain, right? Explain means in words, right? You have to use words, and justify means you can use straight math. Uh, 35 is a dub. 36, even though it says algebraically, you can definitely solve this with the calculator. Y1, Y2, and at least get another one point out of four, maybe even two points, depending on how you do it. Um, I'll plug this into the calculator and do this with you. Again, we want to try to get as many points to secure the bag, okay? Secure it. All right, so I went to y equals, just to show you. Um, how you get the radical is you hit second x squared. See the little radical thing right there? And then if I hit graph, it looks like, okay, it's only crossing once right here. So second trace or second calculate, option number five, intersection. I'm going to move over to the right. Da, 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 da. You can keep going if you want. I'm going to somewhere around here. Uh, no, let me do this right. Okay, so somewhere here, hit enter, 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 and then it tells you the intersection, right? So the intersection, it's asking you for algebraically for all values of x, so we only care about the x value. So this one is x equals 6.25, x equals 6.25, and you could say um, what you did in the calculator, like point of intersection, point of intersection. Um, and this would secure you one point out of four, okay? This is a graph, but they don't give us an equation, so nah. Right, that's it. Done. All right? So, so far right now, let's just calculate our points. How much we would get? We would get one here. So, let's add these points up. So, one, one plus... Uh, this right here would be a full four points, so that's four points for question 34. For question 33, we're doing it on the calculator, even though it says algebraically, so that would give us another point. So that's six points total. This right here would give us a full two points. This is question 32, so that's eight points. Uh, for question 30, state da-da-da, we did all of this right, so that would give us another two points. So that's 10 points altogether. Okay. Okay. Got this. This is another two points for number 26. So that's 12. Uh, question number 24. So we calculated this already, right? We said we got 12 out of these 24. So let's just check that. So 1... So this is another two points right here. So plus two, so that's 14. So two. This is another two points. 
so that's four points again. That's 18 altogether. Mm, we didn't do any of these. That's one, two right here. So that's another four points. So that's 22 points altogether. All right. Uh, that's one, two. That's another four points. All right. So that's 26 points. One, two, three. So three times two is six. That's another six points. That's 32 points altogether plus four more, right? Two, two. That's another four points. So plus four. So that's 36 points altogether. Now watch. 36 points. So now prepare to be amazed. That's 36 points altogether. This is the conversion chart for Algebra 2, the June 2019 exam. Watch this, okay? So 36 points, straight calculator, would earn us a 74. That would give us a 74. I'll take a 74. Hell yeah. Right? So a 74 is what we would get. Um, on this test, straight calculator. So if you know all of this, right, the stuff that I'm teaching you, you would get a 74 on this exam, all right? That's straight valid. So I'm going to leave this up so you can uh, take a look and see. Uh, this should definitely give you a lot of confidence, all right? I love you guys. You're going to do great. Uh, we have about two and a half weeks till our test. Our test is going to be on January 26th. How do I know? Watch. Uh, January 2023, Regents, Cal Regents PDF, okay. So January, so our Regents is going to be on the 26th at 1.15 p.m. So put a reminder on your phone right now, January 26th, 1.15 p.m., Algebra 2, okay. Be there or be square. You need to be there by 12, try to be at school around 12.30, that way I can give you some last-minute tips, da-da-da. Um, you guys are going to do great, okay, guys and girls.